Hello, I am Angela Wardle and I am going to talk about various aspects of music and the evidence for musical instruments in Roman Britain. Music of any sort would always have been part of everyday life, be it as part of larger scale entertainment or just something played in the home. Our knowledge of instruments from Britain is confined to only a few surviving fragments and pictorial evidence, mostly on mythological scenes, which are often frankly fanciful, a problem which is not confined to the British evidence. The Milden Hall dish, for example, shows a typical scene of Bacchic revelry, which would have been recognised throughout the empire, with percussion instruments, cymbals, tambourines, and this view show also shows the pan pipes and the double pipe, the tibia. Music had an important role in both public and private life. For example, the tibia, the equivalent of the Greek aulos, was played by professional musicians in religious ceremonies, at funerals, in the theatre, and at private parties. The Roman tibia was a reed-blown pipe with a double reed, rather like that of an oboe, and it was played in pairs, as is shown on many contemporary illustrations, for example, these musicians from Pompeii. No complete set survives, consequently there are various possibilities as to how the two pipes sounded, in unison, which would give an interesting beating effect, in simple harmony, or perhaps as a melody with a drone. Illustrations in Britain are very rare, but a figurine from Silchester depicts a female piper with a pair of instruments. Rare fragments survive, for example, these bone mouthpieces which held the reed, and extraordinary fragments of a composite pipe from London, a bone pipe with copper alloy sleeves which could be rotated to open and close finger holes in different combinations, a Roman development of the simple Greek instrument. The only other wind instrument, perhaps more of a folk instrument, known from Britain, is the syrinx or pan pipes. Unlike the tibia, the sound is produced by blowing across a circular mouth hole, as on the modern transverse flute, but the hole is at the top of each pipe, which is arranged in series. The instrument is familiar to us from classical iconography, and the traditional number of pipes was seven although some illustrations show many more. There are several surviving sets of pipes carved from a single block of wood from the Roman period, with examples from France, Germany and London on the Thames foreshore. The pipes inside the block are of different lengths, giving different pitches to the notes. The Greek lyre and its more elaborate form, the kythera, both known from Greek and Roman art, traditionally had seven strings and were plucked. The body of the lyre, shown on mythological scenes, is usually shown as tortoise shell from which it originated. This wooden lyre in the British Museum with a tortoise shell sound box has been restored from surviving remains. The kithara was the larger box-like instrument of the professional musician Contemporary images are often less than detailed and sometimes fanciful. The mosaic showing a group of female musicians from Mariam in, in Syria shows such a large developed instrument. The mosaic also shows the double pipes, a small organ, hand clappers and a set of chiming bowls filled with water to tune them to different pitches. The few remains of stringed instruments in Roman Britain include two bone tuning pegs from London sites, which are from lyres or kithras, or possibly lutes, which were also known in the Roman world. Fighting in the amphitheatre was accompanied by martial music, the blare of brass instruments dramatising the action and signalling the different types of the combat. Typical is this ensemble shown on a mosaic from Ziten in North Africa. The curved cornu and the long straight tuba are well-known military instruments, but the other, more unusual instrument is the hydraulis, a form of organ invented in the 3rd century BC. One of the finest depictions of an organ, with the cornu, is on this mosaic from a villa at Nenig in Germany. The Roman organ was essentially a mechanically boned set of pan pipes 
in which pumps and a hydraulic reservoir provided a continuous supply of compressed air to the pipes. The reservoir and pumps can be seen on this lamp from Carthage. Vents forcing air into the pipes were opened and closed by means of a keyboard. Although there is no direct archaeological evidence from Britain, fragments have been found on some continental sites. The mosaic shows the water reservoir and pipes, and the player is clearly a woman with an upswept hairstyle. Epigraphic and pictorial evidence records several female organists in the Roman Empire, and the instrument seems to have gained in popularity from the mid-first century AD, the Emperor Nero being one of its more notorious players. The Roman cornu, a curved horn, was derived from an Etruscan instrument. This example in the British Museum dates from the 4th to 3rd century BC. It was developed and used in the Roman army and is depicted as such on Trajan's column. Mouthpieces of copper alloy belonging to either the cornu or tuba have been found on several sites in Britain. Other noisemakers, known in the Roman world and found in Britain, are bells, not perhaps strictly musical instruments, but they are li were likely to be used in religious ceremonies as well as for door chimes. The images show a typical selection of bell forms, note the polygonal handle, and a set of chimes or tintinabulum. The sistrum, a form of rattle, traditionally consisting of loose discs strung on a frame, was used in the worship of Isis. A form of this instrument, with flat spatulate head set with rings which held dangling chains, has been found in Roman Britain, with several examples from London. This one is from London, close to the River Walbrook. It is likely to have been used in religious ceremony, possibly a Zayac ritual, but its function as a child's rattle cannot be ruled out.